What up, what up, y'all? You know who it is, your boy JD Kiss, you know what I mean? Right now with Chris Strong. Shout out to Camden, New Jersey, all my niggas out there. Let's get right into it. <laughs> yeah! Yo, BTB TV. Chris Strong, man. Yo, boy, let's get him, man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, now off plan, used to get busy with them guns in my hand, four or five or a black nine with a grand in my pocket and beef cool as a fan, BTB TV, we are not playing, y'all just talk, we back it up and down, sideways, F what y'all saying, we Kyrie and Kanye, this a boss talk, so you clown should just fly away, yeah, hop on the bridge, throw your frame off the highway, this not a game, this is business, this my way, real talk, your opinion is nothing to us, we gon' stay on chill, long as y'all don't violate, but it's not fair. We could be cool or your worst nightmare. We the best, I swear. And you could be my friend or enemy. I don't care. And you better be where. Because we're coming for the whole pie and we don't share. No, it just ain't fair. But we the best, I swear. We the best, I stay up in the mix. A project politics, my mood kind of sick. Name well known from the hood to the sticks. A hundred on the highway, flying so fast, burn the gears when I shift. Some people kick dirt on your name, what should you give them? Broke your back for them and they got the nerve to play you. Kick rap's door or push to shove my way through. Bum rush the kitchen, put my floor up on the menu. The jealousy be hitting up in jokes. That's why I stay serious like David Banner turned in the Hulk. In pure form like the Pope. Haters get infrared beams with the scope, so run and get ghosts. We fight good boxed in like Floyd on the roast. I'm the great black hope. Man, we the team, and they know it coast to coast, and it just ain't fair. We could be cool or your worst nightmare. We the best, I swear. And you can be my friend or enemy, I don't care, and you better be where. Cause we coming for the whole pie and we don't share No, it just ain't fair We the best, if you with us, put your lighters in the air No, it just ain't fair Just ain't fair Joy and the pain. Yo, yo, we're about to go back. Yo, we're about to do some. Let's go back and get it popping again. My little bro, Chris Job, BTB TV. We bully the bullies. Where you at, bro? What's up? No. We're about, to, we're about to go there right now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, yo, born. Let's go. Yo, born. Show them how we do this, man. BTBTV. We pull the bullies. No, no run, no retreat. Yeah. yeah. BTB, TV. One more time for y'all in the back. Got slow then just Yo, John Gotti flow, rap pie below. Escobar status, rap game call it your own. I can show you how you lay back. And watch your pockets grow stay away from devious women end up like papa smoke y'all wake up every day twitching like yo i gotta post i wake up every day mission it's million dollar notes dominoes body drop rot stink like hollow toast broadway man if you know then you know i came for everything they said i couldn't have got that and then some and then some my wins on overload say you overdose your rappers in the tight squeeze and that clutch like cobra rope the open door we don't go for that harsh road another a tale from the street, death and horror flow. The projects like a ghost trying to haunt your soul. Another tale from the street, homicide the folks who want to play to them gun scream. Adios. Another tale from the street, black mafia. 
So dark, call it your mix with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting to their life, movie curtain closed. Nowadays, your foes will flock you wearing Malcolm X hats, triple sixes, the devil on his shoulder, won the death match. Reminiscing when more street ninjas was off the hook, chasing D's up off the block. Torn to run and get the force, blood on pavement. He's 12 years old and he tough to play with. He don't go to playgrounds, that's his fiends who want their main stick. We can't miss, we can hit the target with our hands behind our back, our eyes closed and half brainless. Don't play with us. Another tale from the street, death and horror flow. The projects like a ghost try and haunt your soul. Another tale from the street, homicide the folk who won the play, send them guns, scream, adios. Another tale from the street, black mafia. So dark, call it your own mix for Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting till they like movie curtain close. Yeah, BT, BT, big. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, born. Yo, born. Let's get him. Let's get him. Cash, we up in here, man. Yo, first of all, I want to say peace to the Father, the Nation, the guys and nerfs. Salam alaikum, alhamdulillah. Rock my tail. Allah to all the true Muslim brothers and sisters out there. This is the King of New Jersey. This is BTB TV. We bully the bullies. I'm the honorable host on the Vine Almighty Allah. And we're gonna talk about that new Jack City shit. Uh the Mac Middle Show salute, my bro in the building, salute, man. Salute. Yeah, you know. yeah. We're gonna talk about that new Jack City shit. And all you niggas is claiming it came from the Chambers brothers. When I was living in the projects, it was no projects like that in Detroit, like it was in fucking Jersey oh, and Washington, Pioneer Homes, the Glory of Manners, Bay Way, PS Manners. Come on, we can even go to North. Seth Boy, Day Street Projects. Let's keep it real. That was a yeah. real New Jack City, bro. Prince Street, the real New Jack City. I heard about was, Prince Street back in the but day. But since you niggas don't want to, y'all want to give Judge no spot. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Judge all the shot right now. Fuck what y'all heard. It's the King of New Jersey, BTB TV, and I'm definitely bullying you, bullying from out of town. Let's do it. Let's get it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We go. We will start. Let me see where we'll start from. We're gonna start. We're gonna start my, my boy Sean. I was speaking on, on a beef with the shower pots, yo. We're gonna go over there. You know what I'm saying? He beat the odds. So you niggas don't know me. You guys know the new Sean. I don't know the old Sean. You know what I'm saying? So I lost. Absolute, I lost a deep friend of the game. And like, you know what I'm saying? And to this day, man, I'm saying people don't understand the pain. You know what I'm saying? That I had to go see the devil and ask God for help. He's the God. I lost a good friend, man. A stand up dude, man. His name is Black Prello. He's from Avon, New Jer- North New Jersey. A soldier. You know I mean? So understand when you're in this lifestyle, you play these streets like I play these streets. You know what I'm saying? I played this game. But I got scars all over me, my nigga, from the losses I took. Every loss I took, my nigga, in this world was a win for me. Because I learned. Every loss, every loss I took was a win for me. Believe me when I tell you that. If anything I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about my losses, not my wins. Because wins come. Losses will make you a man. Losses will make you tough. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to give you some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Some shit that I, you know what I'm saying? I don't really talk about. I wanted to touch on a little bit about some real street niggas that come in this game. And we all got situations like that. We all lost people like that. We all see, we know those that know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about some real street shit. I'm not talking about this Instagram shit, my nigga. I'm not talking about this Instagram. I'm going to give a fuck about this Instagram shit, nigga. I had a name before Instagram. I don't give a fuck about this shit, my nigga. None of this shit. People don't like me. They don't even know me, my nigga. They don't know. They don't know the shit that a young nigga went through. I suppose I don't even put to be here. I suppose have been dead a long time ago, committed suicide. They don't. I don't even put to be here. By the grace of God, I got some old timers that pray for me. Muslim dudes. 
Christian. They want to see me make it because they know that kid went through some shit. Never had a father. None of that shit. I never complained. When you niggas come on my neck, I never complain. When niggas try to take my head off, I never complain. Fair use, fair use, fair use. I never folded, my niggas. I just had my head up and my heart out, and I was hurt. But I never gave up. I never gave up. See what I'm saying? Don't lie on me, my niggas. Don't lie on me. And niggas try to fold me plenty of times. I never gave up. I didn't fold. I ain't go out like a pussy. I ain't cry. I took it like a man. I took it. That's what Bilal taught me. You take your wins and your losses, nigga. That's the game. This ain't no rap shit by Mick Mills. I'm telling you, real street niggas take their wins. You can't be in the street and not take an L, my nigga. That's the favorite thing people say. Oh, he took an L. Oh, he got That's knocked an apple top. Oh, oh this, that, 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 that. they got one incident everyone talks about about me. You can't. I can tell you another incident. A nigga, a nigga punched me in the face in jail. I can tell you some incidents. They want more? A nigga punched me in the face. I told a nigga suck my dick. A nigga knocked me. A nigga punched me in my face. My man twin. I, I remember that. I forgot the beginning of that story. Yeah, I wasn't here. I was telling people the first lesson I got in jail. A nigga punched me in the face. Closed and gave me a donut. I told a nigga suck my dick. I was out of pocket. Today, that dude is my best friend to this day. He's from Kingston, Jamaica. So if everyone think I took an L off that situation, I never took an L, my nigga. I always got a lesson out of it. I blame myself. When twin punched me in the face, I blame myself. Any predicament I got myself into, I blame myself. Now why? I should have read it. I was great. I was raised by old timers. You can read a problem coming, but I was so arrogant. I got a situation in the streets, my nigga. I could avoid it, my nigga. But I was so arrogant. Arrogant. When you're arrogant, you can't see nothing. I was so arrogant at one time, my nigga. I couldn't see nothing. But the world will humble you, my nigga. Tape alert on the beat. All right, y'all. I was showing sure heart well, real equal posse representative. But yo, we about to we about to get real deep in this shit right now because I'm tired of you crab ass niggas disrespecting Jersey. Talking about talking about talking about a New Jack City was based on some country ass niggas from Alabama that moved to Detroit. <laughs> Thanks. We will keep it all the way funky. Yo, we even had we even had the uh Fed magazine saying. What New Jersey was based on? E. Paul Posse, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Paul Posse, yeah, yeah. Y'all know that we're gonna show that. We're gonna show you that today, bro. Because we'll take no losses like that, but we, we win. We take losses, but we win. Like we win. This is this is the big homie, the big bro. This is family. A loud prattle, E. Paul Posse. We might go down. Hear this story, you know what I'm saying? We're going through all this shit, man. We don't play, man. We don't play, bro. That's what we do, man. I show respect where I'm from, niggas. Let's get it. We ain't taking the jersey in a minute. So tonight, we're taking a ride down Jersey. Now, if Jersey in the building, shout your hood out in the comments. Now, we're not glorifying anything tonight. It's just a history lesson. Now, the Pretlow family been active since the 1960s, fighting shootouts, just chasing wreck all over Jersey. With the large number bloodline, the third generation would take advantage of the family name and hit the drug scene. Now, the Prello family tradition was not selling Check drugs. Rules. See, those rules were enforced to keep the family in line. But what you going to tell someone that came from a broken home? Now, what you know about the Eport Posse? The name came from the majority of the members resided in the Elizabeth, Elizabeth New section New of Jersey. Elizabeth, New Jersey. Eastwood, nigga. Now, Bilal, a.k.a. Easy, and his brother, Robert, a.k.a. Wakil, was started an organization consisted of two drug distribution teams. 
the group was divided into two groups with Bilal running phase two. Now, Bilal Run started in 1987 in junior high school. He started off selling tree, getting it from the Jamaicans, and was doing so well. He and his friends was able to buy, you know, clothes, jewelry, cars, have the pretty woman. And he was a pretty fair guy also. He knew how to fight. See, a lot of people were scared of Bilal before the gunplay because he had put them hands on him. But yeah, he was selling lots of tree and blew up in a month. With connections in New York, he decided to step his game up to cope. But he knew it was serious business, and he didn't have any attentions on disappointing the connect. He was getting his work from the Dominicans in New York. The work was being transported in taxi cabs. Now, the trafficking network included Elizabeth, Newark, Linden, and Rawway. In March 1998, working with the Union County Narcotic Strike Force and the state police, the Elizabeth Police Detective Division began making a series of undercover narcotic buys from street-level dealers near the Pioneer Homes Housing Project in Elizabeth. Wow, the investigation wow. dubbed wow. Operation wow. Pioneer. Now, November 9th, 1988, at 6 a.m., the Pioneer Homes and Loomis Street addresses in Elizabeth were made with over 30 arrests, including Robert Pendo. Items seized from two locations included an Audi sports car, a Suzuki, a Jeep, Nissan Pathfinder, $67,000 worth of cocaine, and $31,000 in cash, a loaded 22, and a loaded double barrel shotgun. Now, one of the members decided to become an informant. Now, I don't think it's necessary to say his name on this public channel, but. At Behavior Interventions, we help kids. The former, they talk about is Muta Sessoms. Muta Sessoms, he taught us how to play basketball, football, baseball. Mm. He did all that to the kids, you know, he did all to the kids, you know what I'm saying? But he right. did inform, he did it rap, you know, since so he got away that title. I know right. his ex-wife, I know his kid, I know his kids, all that, I know his first cousins, all his family. But he mm. did tell, you know what I'm saying? So, so um, like I said, he told us a lot, he showed us a mad love in the hood, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna say shout out to him for that, for telling. He's the four nine three eleven with that nigga. We don't do that shit. We stand up. We stand up, niggas, man. We don't rap. He's he the only one that rat on Epo Posse. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about Lover J. Nigga Jamel. He's a fucking rap. Supreme rap. He ain't just rat on Epo Posse. He rat on niggas out of Pittsburgh and North Carolina. All oh, shit. Any place that nigga wants to hold on, nigga. Let's keep it real, bro. Let's go. Let's go, man. Yo, this is my hood. I'm so love, bro. Fuck that. Word, word. Let's Kids go. Kids special needs. We help support families that have children. With his help, phones were tapped, warrants were issued, and more houses were raided. November 25th, 1988, 16s, including Bilal, was arrested. Bilal moved this operation to London to avoid the heat in Elizabeth. The police seized $133,000 worth of coke is $72,000 in cash. Now, Bilal was charged with being the leader of a drug trafficking network, maintaining and operating a drug manufacturing faculty, possession more than five ounces of cocaine with the intent to distribute, employee juveniles in a drug distribution scheme, and cocaine distribution within a thousand feet. Salute, of baby, salute. He was told if convicted, salute, he could be facing life in prison. Now, he will make the $250,000 bill, and five days later, Bilal and his brother will be involved in another raid. Man, the law was not playing around this time. It was, you know, the war on drugs and shit. <laughs> now, the two received more drugs and gun charges. Now, Bilal was in the county with his feet up. He knew he had to run his operation from jail, so he made sure he had the phones on lock. Now, he would do this by having guys bailed out. You know, he buying sneakers from everyone on his tier and promising jobs. Guys would give him their phone time. Now, you have, you know, records show that some of his phone calls would last up to three to four hours. Now, he was known for spoiling his men, taking them, you know, on shopping sprees every month, buying his men cars, giving money to kids on the street the whole nine. It's been alleged that he once bought five cars in one week and he had no license. Now, one day you could spot him pushing the canary yellow caddy Eldorado with the yellow matching interior with the chrome piping, the Pujo 505 with the tan leather interior, candy apple bins, the Jeep with the bikini doors, 
soft top with the crazy sound system, banging party music with his name in it. Yeah, that was the, during the time where they used to make the custom tapes. They used to pay the DJs to say their names. Now, it's been alleged that Bilal and his brother Robert was able to get furlough while in the county. Now, furlough was just like a, a temporary release, you know, like the inmates will go to work. But I don't know how these guys would get that. <laughs> but um, these guys would receive, you know, the paperwork. They would have paperwork sent to them about the informant. Now, while on temporary release, they would pay him a visit. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but let's just say a hammer, machete, and an electric saw was involved. Now, I'm going to cover that on my upper echelon channel. So, for all my upper echelon members, I'll cover all the bodies that's tied. All right. Now, the machete and the um, saw, right? That's what they use to chop up Muta Sessions' body. They, they cut up his body and had him, had him in all different bags put all over New York County, New Jersey, and some parts of Newark. It was also uh, it was also alleged that his head was being played kickball with in the Pine Home Project by kids because they had his head in a, in a bowling ball bag. Now, I wasn't there to see the head being kicked around, but I was in the Pine Homes at the time I lived there, and I heard about it. I was a young kid, you know what I'm saying? But also, also to understand that Bilal paid off a lot of people for a lot of shit he did. And the people accepted it because the money was involved. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, he ain't talking about I know, so I'm telling you what happened. Let's when keep big going. money's involved, a lot of niggas turn the other way, you know, turn the other cheek. Right. Just some way it goes. Tied to the organization. And this way darker than you expected when I cover the stories. You'll look at these men different. So if you're not an upper echelon member, join now. It's worth it. Now, Bilal will end up making bail, and thanks to the help of his guy, Sean Hartwell, he was able to get the bail down to a half a million, and he would pull some strings to get it done. Now, Robert would make the $250,000 bail. Now, they would get out, and Bilal would call a meeting with drug dealers from all over Elizabeth to let them know he didn't want their territory or nothing, but they're going to take his product and get with his program. And if anyone wanted to dispute that, he's killing them on the spot, no questions asked. Now, the problem with that is he's tried to get the older fellas that have been in the game longer than him to get with the program, telling them that they can only sell heroin. And I'm pretty sure they looked at him like he was crazy. <laughs> but there was a kingpin named Bobby Ray Davis that was fresh home. You know, he was doing this thing. He was in the field way before Bilal. Now, David, now, Baba Ray, Baba Ray, that's my, that's my, that's my boy Rocky's father. Now, Baba oh, Ray, he was, yo, he just had came home, but him and his brothers, Davis, not the Davis related to the Colonel, but the other Davises, yo, they was heavy in the streets of Elizabeth, yo. And he, um, he, he gave, he gave him an option, and that's when bloodshed started, yo. We can go back and let him finish telling about it, and I'm gonna tell y'all about it. Because I was there, I said. Davis was the alleged heroin king. He was one of the few that came to the agreement with Bilal to only move heroin. But shortly after the agreement, members of the Eport Posse came across some of Davis' men hustling coke in the Pioneer Projects. Now, July 9th, 1989, Bilal, Sean, and others jumped one of Davis' men that was spotted dealing coke. Now, later that day, almost around 11 p.m., Davis and a few of his men spotted Robert, and he was gunned down. Now, Robert ended up dying in Sean's arms. Now, that same night, Sean, Bilal, and Irvin was riding around heavy looking for ops, but the cops got to them and charged them for gun possession. Now, the cops thought Sean was responsible for Robert's death because he had blood all over him. Now, that very next day, one of the brothers named Yeah, I hear this shit, right? We, we, we keep it real. Let's, let's listen, y'all. Let's listen. Mm -hmm. Thomas Pretlow gunned down Bobby Ray Davis after spotting him getting out of his car in front of his home. Now, and I want to make sure you guys follow me on this because this is going to be a lot. Wait till y'all hear this. Now, we're going to start with July 26, 1989. Bilal Easy Pretlow pleaded guilty to three narcotics charges in exchange for the dismissal for the 17 other charges. 
Now, he was able to get the most serious charge dismissed of being a leader of a narcotics network. Now, he copped out the 20 years with the eligibility for parole after seven and a half years. Now, shortly after, he will be charged with running the organization while incarcerated after his phone calls were tapped. Now, not only that, but they were linking murders to the organization. July 27, 1989, they returned an indictment charging Bilal and several others with over 35 counts of drug trafficking. January 25, 1991, they handed down another indictment, which was a superseding indictment, including Bilal and several other members of over 35 counts of drug trafficking, violent crimes, and racketeering. Now, if I was his lawyer, I would have just quit at this point. <laughs> now, Bilal's criminal enterprise charge carried the death penalty. They wanted to pit the e Posse chapter to rest. Now, it became the first death penalty case to be tried in New Jersey and second in the nation under the new death all right, child. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me go back. Me that go was back. the first death penalty case. Yeah, that's the first death penalty case in Elizabeth, New Jersey, man. New Jersey, period. First death penalty case, bro. Let me, let me, let me go back. I don't want you to miss that. You know what I'm saying? Let me go back. Let me go back. All y'all niggas talking. New York and Philly was the only ones out here getting that fucking bread. Jersey niggas did the same shit, man. It wasn't just North New Jersey, it was New Jersey too. Let's keep it funky, you know what I'm saying? How these whack ass niggas said, let's keep it Gleco. These whack ass right niggas, let's keep it Gleco. <laughs> Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Why are y'all trying to leave Jersey out, man? Because niggas don't like Jersey niggas, man, because everybody around the world loves us. Right. Let me go, let me go. Yo, I'm showing you that nigga sad, man. I'm showing that nigga sad for a reason, man. Because this is where I'm from, yo. Trying to be hating on Jersey all the time, man. I always hear them talk about New York. Here we go right here, yeah. Here we go right here, yeah. Let's do this. You might be asking yourself, can you actually do high quality live stream? Lord forgive me for the trap shit. So I just smack make it back. Fair use. Bob called and said, boss, this is a real problem. And that's when we decided to go to New York to have Bob make this presentation. We spent the entire day talking about crap. At the entire day, talk. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like my baby Rangers for the touchdown from the base. June of 1986. Bob Stuffman was finally able to convince DEA Pete to come to New York to discuss the crisis. Bob called and said, Boss, this is a real problem. And that's when we decided to go to New York to have Bob make this presentation. And we spent the entire day talking about crack. What it was doing to the content creator like me, the city police department. We had great relationship with us, but they were upset because we weren't working with them. Uh, and so we spent the day, and Jack Long walked away and said, You're right. Coincidentally, it was the same day that Len Bias overdose death occurred in Washington. As the meeting broke up, they heard the news the brilliant college basketball star Len Bias had died of a cocaine overdose the night before just two days after signing with the Boston Celtics. Oh, bias looks. We walk out of a meeting that we spent seven hours in talking about a drug that frightened us because of what its potential was, and then to find out that somebody as, uh, with as much talent as a Len Bias um, with as great a future had, had died from an overdose of cocaine at... Uh, it really impacted all of us. It's a shame that the death of a basketball star had to change the nation's perception about a drug. But that's exactly what happened. 
From the Crime Subcommittee, the death penalty for major traffickers. From the Crime Subcommittee, the death penalty for major traffickers. From the Crime Subcommittee, the death penalty for major traffickers. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Bob Dole. I'm Andrea Rowan. A local success story took a tragic turn this morning. Glenn Bias, the Maryland University basketball star on his way to becoming a world champion Boston Celtic, died of an apparent heart attack today at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. Dave Setter is at the College Park campus of the University of Maryland with this live update. Andrea, this is Washington Hall. This is where Len Bias collapsed early this morning in this dormitory here on the University of Maryland campus. He was talking to some friends early this morning when he collapsed. Doctors say he died of a heart attack, cardiopulmonary arrest. But what that means or what caused that heart attack, we don't know. And at this point, we don't know what the real cause of death for this 22-year-old rising star of the Maryland basketball team and eventually the Boston Celtics. He, uh, Bias was rushed to Leland Hospital early this morning by ambulance. Following him to the hospital were friends and relatives and fellow basketball players from the University of Maryland campus. A lot of people came from the nearby Adelphi community. Uh, Bias went to Northwestern High School, not far from the hospital. Many of his friends showed up at the hospital, obviously very upset over this news and this latest turn and the end of this tragic career for the University of Maryland basketball star. From what we understand, CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, was started right away as soon as Bias collapsed by some people that were with him uh, in the room here at Washington Hall. Prince George's County Ambulance took him to the hospital, and Dr. Edward Wilson of Leland Hospital worked on Bias. Uh, at this point, it's uh, cardiorespiratory arrest. Uh, it's now a coroner's case. Uh, the body will be sent to Baltimore. Further information would come out of that department. We don't know what caused the death. He was circulating blood well, so it looks like there was no internal bleeding. Gators say they have full hours of his life. From what we've been able to do, we'll go get this is Rebecca, who needs a new script. And this is Fernando, searching savings with a click. Online or in-store, for your health and your wallet, 85% of scripts are under $10. CVS Pharmacy, healthier happens together. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go. We have fancy friends. It's a new bird. Exec. Oh, The Flash, BDPG-13. The lights go on. Drugs. Drugs. You're all From the crime subcommittee, the death penalty for major traffickers. Life in prison for some they seized. For their own. We on our way to New Jersey with it. Elizabeth. All my niggas from New Jersey, I get in the comment box. Y'all know I always fuck with y'all niggas real strong. Now. We definitely going to be covering one of, I want to say, the top legends coming out of New Jersey. Uh, I know most of the names mentioned. We get Midget Molly a lot. We get Agbar Prey a lot. I almost want to say the gentleman that we covering today, his story kind of goes under the radar because he really didn't get a chance to not, I don't even really want to say, to really start his career, to be honest. And it was a lot of circumstances within this particular case um, that just stood out with me. Uh, and that's going to be pretty much before I, before I was doing mob ties. I heard about this story and it always, and it always struck home for me, just like several other stories. Um, when I first kind of went through several, like some prior episodes, some stuff, like certain stuff I would kind of leave out or I wouldn't give every single detail because I felt just out of respect of the person that I was covering, some of the stuff was not like full public knowledge. So I ain't really want to, but um. I really think this one is really one one that gets 
uncovered. And the, and the guy that we're going to be covering today is going to be Bilal Pretlo. And for those of you that never heard of Mr. Pretlo, he's going to be, like I said, uh, pretty much a 21-year-old that or at the at the start of his career from all accounts they're gonna say he was 17 but that's just based on the research that i did and he was i i want to say born and raised in new jersey and it's like like i said when i first started doing mob ties put it like this this was one of the episodes that i knew i had to cover and i had to speak on so it's going to be several things that stand out. And the first thing that really stands out is when he was convicted or when he was indicted, I should say, was a real vital time in, in the drug game. It's going to be with the emergence of crack. And I don't know what it was, but just based on my research, this the shit that he was doing pretty much was going on in every single state. But they singled him. It was pretty much three cases that they had that they qualified and they wanted to run through the ring of wit first. So I'm going to start by saying on February 2nd, 1991, a federal death penalty law was passed in 1988. And as that was used as a weapon in the government's campaign against drugs and its movement towards its first test. Um, and the first cases or the trials were set up for Chicago, for Alabama, and going to be from New Jersey. Now, an anti-bill, an anti-drug bill signed by President Reagan allows the government to execute convicted drug kingpins and anyone convicted of drug-related killings. So we're going to repeat that again. It was a bill signed by then-President Ronald Reagan that allowed the government to execute convicted drug kingpins and anyone convicted of drug-related killings. Now, at that time, before that law was passed, it was 28 years since the last federal execution. So I said it was three cases, and I said that the three cases was going to take place in Chicago, Alabama, and New Jersey. The case in Alabama was actually going to be for a, a white gentleman by the name of David R. Chandler, and he was set to go to trial on February the 12th of 1991, and he was accused of arranging and providing a weapon for a May 1990 killing related to a marijuana grow and distribution operation in East Alabama. And if I'm not mistaken, I, I want to say he didn't get the death penalty, but he's still in jail on that offense. Now, in the case in Chicago is going to be one that we're going to bring to you. So we're going to just kind of talk light. It's going to be of a guy by the name of Alexander Connor, if I'm not mistaken. And, or I might be off with the last name because I, I got so much going on, but pretty much in his case, it was going to be something similar. I want to say he killed a federal witness. And in this case, they're going to say Mr. Pretlow also killed a police informant. And it was also another killing that was involved with the case. So they... They wanted to try him for murder for those two cases. They they pretty much called him, like I said, called him a kingpin at the age of 21. And according to the New York Times, they said Mr. Pretlow's career was brief but eventful. And according to his indictment, his career be began in 1987 when he was a junior at Elizabeth High School. Shout out to everybody that went to Elizabeth High. Anybody? Y'all know we need y'all in the comment box, especially... Elizabeth High, stand up. Elizabeth High, stand 1987 up. 1987 to 1990. Now, um, it ended up with him going to prison in the fall of 1987. So, it pretty much gave him life over a two-year run. And by all accounts, they said the organization started out selling marijuana. He had several brothers uh, that were down with the organization that... I, 
it wouldn't be right if I didn't mention them because a lot of times he's the main one that get brought up. And also, sh- shout out to Sean Hartwell too. He's another guy. He's home, but he he was definitely a main person that was involved with this case. He has an interview up on YouTube. Y'all just search him. Real, real good interview. Now, high and when high school ended, like like we said, he went from high school almost to prison. Now, during that time, he established himself by cutting the price of vials of cocaine from the usual $20 to 10 for some customers. And that was according to Kevin McCarthy, who was the assistant U.S. attorney who outlined the government's case against the then Eport Posse. And, then, and the way they got the name Eport Posse from what the government contends, that probably was not even their name, but... From what the government attends, they were from the Elizabeth Port section of the city, and they pretty much used that to to take on their name. Now, after his arrest, sometime in March of 1991, at the New Jersey's Commission's public hearing on afro Lemu and organized crime, police detective Thomas G. Swan testified about a particularly vicious group of young African-American males that operated a cocaine trafficking network in Elizabeth and in the Clinton Avenue area of Newark. And in March of 1988, working with the Union County Narcotics Strike Force and the state police, the Elizabeth Police Detective Division began making a series of undercover narcotics buys from street-level dealers near the Pioneer Homes housing projects in Elizabeth, and the investigation was dubbed Oper- Operation Pioneer. Yo, step up the Pioneer Homes, bro. We did what we did, bro. 24 at first court, baby boy. That's how we do. Shout out. <laughs> Yo, fuck it. Let's show love. Now, after they obtained search warrants and arrest in 1988, Detective Swan was able to develop a confidential informant, a gentleman by the name of Muta Sesums, who revealed that a vast majority of those arrested in the operation Muta Sesums, part of damn, the bro. I that two shit. brothers and those two brothers he alleged was going to be Robert and Bilal Pretlo. Now, after those arrests... Yo, I'm going to tell you some funny shit. I remember when I was a kid, right? We, we always knew Muta Sesum was, was, was home when he was coming to the block because you hear his truck four blocks away. He had one. He had, he had one of them. He had one of them. Uh, the motherfucking Wranglers, yo, with the plastic windows and shit like that. The top off. Right. And you hear that? You hear that shit? His system was so loud. You hear that shit three to four blocks away. Mm. You feel the vibration in your feet, yo. That's how loud that shit was, yo. That was that system was, back in the days used to be crazy, huh? I remember oh, yeah. uncles and shit. <laughs> They'd be having the same system. Rest, the two groups merge under the leadership of the younger brother, Bilal. And this is according, this is all according to Detective Swan. Now, organization members called themselves the Eport Posse Phase 2 after the Elizabeth Seaport and modeled themselves after Jamaican Posse's. He said they were often dressed in flamboyant styles, arming themselves with sophisticated weapons and investing in in expensive jewelry. Excuse me. Several expensive cars driven by the group members were placed in the names of their acquaintances or relatives. So starting out, they're going to say that Bilal was dealing marijuana in high school. He eventually grabbed the drug market for him and his brother's organization and they ran rival gangs out of Elizabeth occasionally with shootouts and they, some of those shootouts would occur in broad day. Now, Detective Swan testified <laughs> the, the enormous style I'm going to shoot at one time. Alright, so I'm standing in the middle of the court, right? And shout out and shout out to my, my, my big cousin Jabbo. We're in the middle of court. We talking and shit. I'm like in the fucking eighth grade. And um, I don't know what some niggas from North came through. They shooting over the niggas from North. Jabbo pushed me down. Why well, he pushed me down? He was adding these niggas back out, right? 
Nobody, nobody, nobody dropped and got killed so I can talk about this shit, yo. But yo, that when they said she was a broad day, it was she was a broad day where I'm from, yo. Real talk. She was a broad day. I'm talking about I'm ducking bullets in the, in, in the eighth grade, yo. Salute. Salute. I got my boy Cross in the building with the plug. Salute. Salute, everybody. Salute. Salute. It's the plug Salute. podcast. It's the plug podcast. It's the plug podcast. We got my man Mac Mizzle for shizzle up in here. You already know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know we do, man. But Jeff, this is Eastwood, man. Stand up Eastwood, man. I'm so yeah. love for my town. Equal posse. All that. Let's go. Equal posse. In which Bilal pursued his goal to expand the drug market. They said he pretty much had meetings of drug dealers from all over Elizabeth and the Central New Jersey restaurant. There he indicated that his intentions to control the drug trafficking market in Elizabeth, and he threatened that those who would not go along with him would face reprisals from his group. Now, Detective Swan testified that the group's cocaine supply came from a Dominican by the name of Benson, who was located in New York City, which is not far from New Jersey. And the cocaine generally transported to uh, the city of Elizabeth in taxi cabs. Now, in 1989. I'm Nick Nimmin, and I'm a StreamYard user. For the last six years, I've been live streaming consistently to YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else on the internet that would have me. And during that time, I've had the opportunity to use pretty much all the live streaming software that's available. Once I discovered StreamYard and found how easy it is, I was sold right out of the gate. HelloFresh. Guys, shrimp spaghetti with a kick is what we're going to make. You guys know that HelloFresh makes cooking dinner easy, fun, and affordable? Let's do this. Everything is already pre-packaged, pre-portioned. You guys have no food to wait. The group was distributing kilograms of cocaine, resulting in profits of hundreds of thousands of dollars per week, according to the detective. And he said law enforcement strengthened this resolve to deal with the Epor Posse as violence surrounding its operation escalated. The informant, Mr. Sessoms, was murdered in June of 1989, and Bilal's brother, Robert, was killed by a rival gang on July 9th of 1989 as well. Now, it, there's going to be the day after a third brother that we mentioned his brothers earlier, Thomas. They're going to allege that he killed a gentleman by the name of Bobby Ray Davis. All right, now, now check this out. Let's do some real shit. When Wuta was killed, we all, everybody loved Wuta Sessoms. Even though he was, he not, we don't understand that he was a rat back then. But when we was kids, we didn't know what a rat really was like that. You know what I mean? Right. Wuta Sessoms taught us how to play basketball, baseball, football. He'd come to the block, buy his ice cream and shit like that and show us love. I know his daughter. I know his daughter's mom. I know his. This whole family, we all grew up. Elizabeth is like, it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a nice size city. So he was, so basically, he was like, he was like the the old school Robin Hood in some ways. Yeah, facts. He's facts, yo. And his family, like I said, I grew up with his family. I was close to his family. He is a fucking rap, but at the time I was a kid, I didn't know nothing about that. I just knew that he was a good person. He treated us good. He showed love to the kids, you know what I'm saying? And I remember, Bob, I remember Bobby Ray, Bobby Ray, Bob, we ain't call him Bobby Ray, we call him Bobby Ray. His son, his, one of his sons, two of his sons, Binky and Rocky, I grew up with them niggas. We went to school together, we grew up together. We hustled together, we beef, we fought, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Rocky and and, and, um, and Binky. But Bobby Ray Davis, see, that, was, that was the one that was going, they were going to war over some over the drug trade in Elizabeth, you know what I mean? Just want to yeah. Know. That's we just double facts right now. Here we go. Who was a Newark drug dealer that had designs on the Pretlow turf and in retaliation for Robert's death. So he pretty much avenged his brother's death because they say that Bobby Ray Davis was moving in on the turf. Now the Federal Drug Enforcement Administration, it 
Union County Sheriff's Office, the Newark Police, the Essex County Sheriff's Office joined in with the Elizabeth Police and the State Police and the Union County Prosecutor's Office to begin an investigation of the group. And Sessoms, with the information that Mr. Sessoms gave them, he pretty much described them as a organized criminal enterprise. And he said that and I'm gonna tell you what Muta Sessoms did. Muta Sessoms, he was still selling pounds of weed when they was in the crack business. He got caught with like 50 pounds of weed or some shit like that in his car. When he got caught with that, he gave everybody up. Wow. Imagine that. He got Damn. caught. He got caught like 50 well, pounds. I know he was getting caught with 50 pounds of weed out here and getting house arrest. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the? It's just eight, different times. Eight, in the 80s, in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, we was like having crack cocaine, bro. Yeah. yeah no, it's cold. It's, yeah. Times have, ch have changed a lot, man. Yeah. It was taken seriously at all levels. And Detective Swan was going to testify mm -hmm. allow Pretlow continue to run that operation even while he was incarcerated at the time of the November 1988 and subsequent arrest, Bilal Pretlow had paid bail and attorney fees for his group members. And while he was in the Union County Jail and various on various drug charges, he continued to run the organization by calling telephones equipped with speed dialing, call forwarding, and conference call capabilities, telephone toll records to an apartment used by a gentleman we spoke earlier, Sean Hartwell, who authorities deem was the first lieutenant who ran the operation in the absence of Bilal Pretlow, um, showed that nearly 400 collect calls was made from the Union County Jail from November 1988 to early February 1989. And they say many of those calls were ex for an extended per period of time, some lasting more than an hour. And they had two or three going on three hours is what they saying. So normally the inmates are allowed to use the telephones in the jail for a specific eight hour period. And each is restricted to approximately five, maybe 10 minutes at a time. Bilal Pretlow, however, integrated himself with other inmates by getting his, by pretty much by locking in with everybody. And he, they gonna say he brought them gifts and he promised them jobs upon his release and those jobs were in his drug distribution operation, according to authorities. And they even going to say in one instance, he bought $70 Reebok sneakers for all the inmates on his tier. And it was going to be upwards of 35 inmates up there. So, you know, they had love for the boy. And they said inmates returned favors by giving up their, their phone time to Prello. And that alone does not pretty much... They really couldn't explain besides um, him looking out for the inmates, the extensive use of the phone. Um, and we're going to move on to January the 18th, 1991. Thomas Prello, who he was convicted of manslaughter and the fatal shooting of Bobby Ray Davis that we spoke of early, earlier and federal charges brought by the United States for New Jersey are pen, were pending against Bilal and eight other members of his group. So that's pretty much like when the indict, like when they, when indictment time came down and Bilal Pretlow himself, he faced the death penalty on two of the charges brought under the new federal law, which provides for capital punishment for persons convicted of drug related murders. Now he is presently scheduled Yo, the death penalty, bro, for selling drugs. They was trying to give hood niggas the death you know penalty. Yo, this shit's crazy, bro. Yeah, that's and, crazy. But they was giving the times, motherfucker, times they were going to get a life in prison with niggas from the hood. Exactly, and the times killed all the people. Times, the times killed 30, 40 people. Yo, it's crazy. John Gotti only got, he got life, bro. That nigga had like 100 million on his jacket. Right, Sam and the Bull end up getting off free. Uh -huh. 
All the all the mafias. Well, you know what I mean. Rizzuto, Rizzuto's from here. You know what I'm saying. He's the one that did that hit in New York. The movie. Um, Freddie Brasco's. Yo, check this out. Ferro Zudo. Ferro Zudo, the baseball player for the Yankees, he lived two blocks away from me in Elizabeth, yo. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because yeah, I, I, when I moved, I moved from the hood to, like, the good area. And two blocks away, they had matches and shit that was going from Elizabeth to Hell, South New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And Ferro Zudo lived right down the street from me, bro. I guess he was he was related to Victor Rizzuto, right? Yeah. Okay. All family. Uh huh. Scheduled to, or he was presently scheduled to begin his federal trial, which was going to take place on March the 26th of 1991. And that was going to be him along with the eight members of his group, face drug ring, and various other offenses. And at, he pretty much was looking at anywhere from going free to the death penalty. So with being a 21-year-old, you got to imagine the amount of pressure that was on his shoulders. So with that being said, it's going to be sometime towards the end of 1991. And I, and I would say right before New Year's, uh, UPI News reported it on December the 30th, 1991, where Bilal, at the age of 21, was found hanging by a bed sheet, and it was on a Sunday in a shower at the Union County Jail in Elizabeth. First of all, let me, let me say something about that. I was in Union County Jail in Elizabeth for years, but there's no way you can hang yourself from a bed sheet in a shower in Union County Jail unless right. somebody did it. Exactly. How do you do that? Right. <laughs> the, the shower's not even that tall, bro, to hang yourself from, you yeah? How you gonna hang yourself in a shot? That shit, the shit not that strong. Yeah, you would have to hold your legs up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how you gonna hold your legs? Or either, or either hog tie your legs. Yeah. Yeah. No man can hog tie your legs, Joe. Exactly. Facts. Right. Right. That's what these niggas saying though, hog. And that's where he was being held prior to trial. And that a little bit always seemed seemed shaky to me. But then again, I don't know what it's like to to be on trial, really fighting for my life. Definitely not in the first death penalty case and definitely not being 21 years of age. So this case just has a lot of variables and a lot of you just kind of got to look at it and. He pretty much l- lost all three his three of his brothers. His lieutenant ended up doing time. Shout out to Sean Hartwell. We happy he home. Y'all follow him on Instagram. Y'all go show him some love, keeping it solid. And y'all know we gonna be back, man, with some more real trills, real shit, man. Yo, but, yo, yo, but like, hold up, they say he lost y'all three brothers. Instagram. He had he lost three brothers at that time, right? But he also had four brothers I grew up with. Rest in peace, my little bro, Ezra. Anyway, he passed. He got killed. You know what I'm saying? His other brother. You know what I'm saying? Right. Samad. Shout out to Samad. Samir. Samar. Shout out to all of them, yo. That's how we do it, man. Let's stand up. But yeah, um, you see how they try to do that shit, bro? They try to they try to give you all this time for drugs, bro. Right. So-called murders. Oh, shit. Drugs. Not no crime syndicate, not no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Drugs. Yeah. You know you flood the hood with drugs, so what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, down here, it's, it's called gangsterism. Y'all was called, y'all think it's called the Rico. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Though. D4 Posse was a drug syndicate, but they had, they had Elizabeth, New Jersey, North New Jersey, Roselle, London, Raleigh. They had bigger than they had down shop I know, but were they only doing drugs? Is what I'm saying. You know, that, when you talk about the mafia, you got you got, you got your hands in everything. You know, right? Killing niggas, they was throwing niggas the whole time, bro. Our shit. 
No, I don't. Right, right. There was murders, distortion. I heard. For sure. So what do you think about this cross? Yeah, I think I'm I'm with you on that. I'm, I just think it's crazy, like you say, back in the days, you know what I'm saying, 50, 50 bows, you're going to want to kill you over some damn weed, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think they just hated them enough. They wanted to get rid of them so bad that they were just trying, you know what I'm saying, it's crazy. You think about back in the days with Prohibition, with, they ain't even to go that far unless you yeah. kill somebody, unless you kill somebody. But That's damn. Crazy. Jack Kennedy was down with the whole Italian mafia killing motherfuckers. They never, his son became president and a fucking attorney general. Right. I mean, that's, and that's just what hustling, I mean, that's always been a, you know, pastime tradition for anybody, whether it's uh, politicians doing slick shit or, you know, whatever it could be. People working all the way down at the grocery store, hell, it's always hustle. So I just think that they, they was mad because they was getting money. And they couldn't stop them from getting money. Exactly. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, bro, I'm, I'm going to tell you something, bro. Now they flood the hood with dope, and all of a sudden there's a Rico. Hey. Yo, bro, yo, bro, I remember this shit, bro. I remember, bro. I'm telling I'm, you, I'm, 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 yo, bro, I walk up my, my apartment, right? Right, right, right. I live the third floor, first school Pioneer Homes, right? I remember Operation Pioneer. I lived in Pioneer Homes at the time. Yo, yo. The ice cream truck will come. You need your know, nigga hit by your school, nigga school clothes, the whole nine. He made sure everybody was good. And I think that's another reason they hate him because he, he did look up for the hood. He did some foul shit now. I don't get me wrong. He did some foul, fucked up shit. But he had the hood down. Well, what about the, how did, how did the nation the feel territory. about him? One's with the territory. Huh? I said, how did the nation feel about him? Um, the um, the nation is on, yeah. This is yo, yeah. I'm part of the nation is not even talked about, him, bro. That's what power he had. It was quiet, it was crazy because I always want to know because I know the um, I know you know the um. Islam is, is big, especially back then, and they think that black they were the lot. Yo, hold up. Yeah. Hey, hold up. Black to the P. He, we grew up together. He's from the same area I'm from. He could tell you how that shit was, bro. Drop the link. Yeah. Let him hit the, the link. Yo, Black to the P, hit the link. It's the link is in the chat, bro. He'll tell you, bro. That shit was crazy when he was growing up, man. Hmm. We sing this shit, bro. That shit fueled uh, New Jack City, you're saying? Well, my friend, he can't on something for right now. Huh? Watch the fuck. Oh, oh, right now, yo. This is crazy, though, bro. I remember this shit, bro. I said, Black to View, remember this shit, too. He said, funny, I don't see it. The link. Well, I'm going to look right now. The link dropped, bro. The link dropped. See, pop it up. There you go. So you said he had that much power, nobody even really even said too much to him. Right. He had the little police department in, in his pocket. Matter of fact, like four of his cousins was a part of the police department, right? Man. Like he got this shit the lock clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Four of his cousins were part of the police department, bro. Uncles, little police officers. Shit like that. They work for a little board of education, all that shit, bro. That family had that shit. Mad. Mad, mad, bro. Right. They're going to know they're going to understand. But you would say you don't understand what that shit was. That shit was crazy. 
He said send it to his IG. Yo, black to the peer, but text it to your phone, nigga. <laughs> I just touched your phone, bro. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, man. Share the content. Yeah, this real spill on it, huh? You poor posse. Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Where, where, when did that movie New Jack City come out? Came out like eighty nine. Right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Black to be right here. Yo, okay. what up, boy? What's good? Let's What's good? Real, bro. What's good? Let's keep it real, bro. Hello. You Hello. remember Epo Potts came Hello. back Hello. out with his kids, bro? Hold up. You remember Epo Potts came out with his kids? When when Epo Potts was out? No, well, not, not even Epo Potts. Remember what um New Jack City came out with his kids? Yeah, yeah, right. Everybody would say it was based on Bilal and Epo Apache, right? That's a fact. Why the fuck they try to say now it was based on the Chambers brother from Alabama and Detroit? Oh, I don't know. Bro, you got, you got a similar Mac story, Mac. too. Who that, Mac Mizzle? That's Mac Me? That's Mac Mizzle. Oh, Mac Mizzle? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Salute, yeah. salute, yeah. salute. Salute, you already know. Salute. All right. Yo. All right, nah, say, yeah, but that shit was that shit was supposed to be Belial Pratlow's story. Your bro, remember the pilot home, the Gloria Manners, P.S. Manners, and motherfucker um Seth Borton and um and the projects over there in North, right there, right right on the border of Elizabeth. That was a fucking Carter, yeah. bro. I lived in a motherfucking Carter, bro. What the fuck do oh, the Carter is based on that. Like Seth Borton, Dayton Street Projects. Yeah, Elizabeth, the yeah, pilot yeah. homes, the Gloria Manners, Bayway. Yeah. P.S. Yeah. Manners, all yeah, that, that's a yeah, fact. All that, yeah, all that shit locked, bro. It was not you can no, say that's about a that. Fact. Damn, they had it locked. Yeah, yo, man, they had other gangster niggas scared to move work, bro. Unless they got it from them. Yeah, it was it, it, it was it was agreements all around town about yeah. about who was selling what, where they were selling that, and how much they yeah. All that was an agreed upon. You had right. to get you had to get your work. You had to get your coke from Bilal. Period. It was no. Got it a couple of niggas got killed because they didn't. Uh huh. That's a fact. No, that's a fact. I mean, he walked around with heads and all types of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm talking. I'm telling you, Muta Sessa was the first one who who turned states. Would you tell him how good how how good of a person Muta was before we found out what a rat really was? Yeah. That nigga used to come to the hood, teach her how to play basketball, football, baseball, buy his ices, the ice creams, whatever the truck came around. You know what I'm saying? That's who had he walked around the apartment with? Yeah, Muta Sessom, yeah. That was, I ain't know that was Muta Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yep. Walked around with that boy head. I had the boy head in the freezer, right? Oh, uh, it was a freezer, but then they, they walked around and it was in a motherfucking bowling ball bat. Well, yeah, because he was but he was basically walking around the apartment showing niggas what happened to him if they cross him. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy right there. Yeah, and, and Bob Ray, yeah, him and Bob Ray was just beefing over the coke and dope situation. Uh-huh. Yeah. And hold up. And, and yo, him and Bob Ray came to an agreement. A few of Bob Ray Hitchman decided they want to sell coke and they wasn't supposed to. That's how that war started. Listen, listen. <laughs> listen, my nigga. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know shit. Hey, yo, shout, know. To, a shout out to Rocky and Binky, them Bob Ray sons. I, 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 just, I, just, I just lived in the hood, that's all. <laughs> 
I'm from that era. I'm from that era. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Man, that's right. old now. All of all of niggas, all of niggas dead in jail. Some niggas never come home. So, true, yeah, true, bro. that's I don't know. Yeah, I ain't trying to open up no investigations. <laughs> that, nigga, the investigation's been over, nigga. <laughs> Some new shit. They got kids out there. You just said it, <laughs> right? The kids not feel like their daddy. Hey, 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 these these new niggas is different, different. My kids ain't yeah. built like me. They different, different. Right? That's real talk. Yeah, Word up. They, yeah, they that that emotional shit is the, the emotion is built up. I mean, it's crazy. They got more emotional aggression built up before the action than after action. They like, man, let me get this off my chest. And they instead yeah. of fighting, nigga, they just want to walk you down. I'm like, Yo, it's like crazy. These niggas got all their mother's characteristics. They don't got the characteristics. Yeah, these niggas don't think about the consequences. They react. No. They you know react. what I'm saying? And then and then they think about the consequences when it's too late, and that's what leads them to telling. That's why it's more <laughs> telling going on now yeah. than ever. Facts, yo, facts. Them niggas, they don't think with the consequences till it's too late, and them niggas start telling. You know yep. I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's the only option they got left. Yeah. After you yeah. done did something, nigga, the only option now was tell or, or, or pay pay the consequences. And these niggas yeah. ain't built to pay consequences. And, and you notice, and even when you're talking to the kids, talking to your kids, it's like talking like the the old saying, um, "Deer with the headlights on." It's like they, they don't. It's like the register. The, it's not registering. Like, do you not realize? Why are you doing this? They were like, nah. But just it's, that's because to, that's because see, <laughs> we we know we no longer um download information to our brain. We no longer build our brain. These kids that's information that's is being uploaded to these kids' brain. So when you download, you are in control of what's being downloaded. When they upload whatever's on that hard drive is what's being uploaded. You know what I'm that's saying? That's so these kids are they 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 don't they don't build their brain no more. They being told everything is at their fingertips. Siri, this, Alexa, do this, and call grandma and call mommy and shit like that. Niggas get locked up, but we got locked up. If we got locked up when we was young, we knew numbers by heart. These kids need their phones. Yo, I need my phone. I need to get my mom and my girl number. Yeah, yeah, facts. <laughs> That's because yeah, that this information is being thing. uploaded. This information is being uploaded to your brain. It ain't downloaded, so it's not there permanently. No, that's I know fact. grandma number from motherfucking 91. Uh, a piece of the guy Paris Todd. Know, we used to know the guy the Paris Todd. By her, I, I, I still know my grandma from, from, from 88. Right. 908, hold and you remember, and you remember growing up. One of the things was you had to learn people addresses. You just didn't, and you just didn't pop up at people's cribs. You had to call, make sure you just wasn't pulling exactly. up unless you was really close to them, and you had to live on the block with them. And they mama yeah. knew you. You just didn't come to their house. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. We learned how to navigate the earth, though. I don't know. I used to drive down south with my grandmother and them. I learned where the south of the border. I knew that mean we was almost in South Carolina. Like I knew what it was. We learned how to, you know what I'm saying? We know how to navigate the earth by learning landmarks and shit. Yo, bro, we were keeping real, bro. We used to do, I remember we used to walk from Pine Homes all the way to London to Pine to play basketball, bro. That's a fact. That's a fact. And we learned what shit was that by learning landmarks. Okay, at this point, we make this turn. These yeah. kids now just Google everything. If the internet fell, my fuckers yeah. wouldn't even know they, they way back know. home. That's real they shit. The they don't know the city for real. And if the internet fell and right and now, and motherfuckers wouldn't know the way back home. I, <laughs> no, you're right. And and think about it. And if you was really a real street dude, what you used to do when you go places, you go there to get lost to find your way back. Oh, that's yeah. a fact. You you take you take different ways. I I know this way. Let me see if I go this way. Yeah. What what I'll get yeah. there with. You know what I'm saying? That's how you right. heard the dead end streets and Come heard on, about man. blocks back you streets. never heard before in your own yeah, city and shit. About the back streets, man. That's a fact. Yeah, that's yeah, a fact. I remember, yeah, I remember one time. What you remember? One time, I I I had go to Lincoln, North New Jersey, bro, and I just I just crossed over to Elizabeth, right? And the motherfuckers was chasing me. The North New Jersey motherfuckers they don't know about the one way streets. Mary's a one way street coming towards the highway and shit. I had Mary yeah. took that one way street all the way down. They hit Wallace Street on the left. To the left of Wallace Street. Yeah. And the right on Magnolia. And then I lost the motherfucker. What the fuck is it though? 
I hit him with the one with streets. We know the one with streets at, bro. It's a fact. Hey, bro, let me tell you something. I, I, as a kid, I was, I was running around like you know, outside playing and not paying attention, and fuck around and looked up and was unfamiliar at where I was at. Started crying, bro. About ten yeah. minutes later, I'm just walking. I was right around the corner from my house, bro. That just I'd never been from in front of the house before. <laughs> I'm playing around, you know what I'm saying? Playing around, wandering off. Ended up somewhere else and looked up and didn't recognize shit. Yeah. It was like, oh my god, like where the fuck am I? From that day forward, I said, pay attention to everything you do, everywhere on, you man. go. Yeah. That way you know your way home. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. But you said <laughs> you said something too real, black to the P. You said, and we was taught that from the old folks, the folks that didn't follow what the what the rules was as far as like you said, uploading whatever man put out there. The, the, uh, the the sites, you know, go up right. here. It's that church right up there. Is that church That's always been there? Hit that left. You gonna go down that road right before it. They'll tell you just like that. That's, That's how fact. you had to know. They ain't tell That's you. That's how we address. still give direction. Yeah, and they ain't well, no ain't pull no up on address. us. You'd be well, like, "What's the fact. address?" I don't know the address. I can tell you how to get there though. That's a fact. One fucker pull up on me right now, and I'll be like, "Look, you go to that bridge. You make a left." When you go right down two blocks, you'll see a chicken shack. When you see that chicken shack, bust a right. That's how I give directions right now today. Landmarks. Landmarks. That's a fact. Lola, little salute, little peace, yo. Yo, but the funny shit, the funny shit is, bro. Like I said, I look at all these niggas, bro. I'm talking about, yo, Elizabeth, you go from Lola Montana, salute. You go from Elizabeth to London, New Jersey, you called through three towns already, yo. Yeah. You go through time. We walk that shit. We walk that shit to play basketball. That's a you fact. Know. My father lived in Roselle, so I used to walk to Roselle all the time. So you That's know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if y'all saw that. I saw a video the other day messed me up and it was in Chicago and they had it on a short clip um in Chicago where the police boxed in, man, it had to have been about at least thirty uh, chargers, scat packs, all these damn different uh, souped up uh, rides. These young boys, they boxed them in because half of them were stolen and they were wow. trying to get away. That's crazy. It's just crazy. Word. I just like we used to try That's to get away crazy. to get to the money. They are stealing shit and driving around. And I want you to watch crazy. something too, Julian. I want you to watch something too. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I'm telling you, these kids, like you say, they, they don't have a moral compass. They live for right then. You know, statistics yeah, show now, it's like the average age for kids of wanting to live is like 16. Back then, people used to be like 18, 21 to make it. Drugs, drugs are downers. Like, yeah. It makes, makes them want to kill themselves and shit. It's crazy. I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, kids, something, yo. Pills and all Kill, yo, killing yourself is not gonna change anything. Y'all gotta stand up and be strong. Y'all gotta still got fucking ten toes. Whatever the world's get put in your face, you gotta conquer that shit. You can't think about suicide or I, I don't wanna be here. Nah, motherfuckers. Live your fucking life. Grow the fuck up. Yeah. Be strong. Be strong, yeah. man. Now, I don't give a fuck what, what, no matter what I go through. I can be broke, homeless, or a motherfucker. Sleep on a motherfucking bitch. I'm not killing myself. I don't want to do. I'm a father way to get that money so I can get the fuck off this bitch. Right. No, nah, that's real. And then you know what? Another thing too was, and we was talking about it last night. My homeboy was on my show, and we was talking about a lot of times kids. And he said something on the head, hit it right on the head with it. He said, self evaluation. They don't know how to give their self. They don't know how to critique themselves and be honest with themselves. You see what I'm saying? They don't have any self-evaluation. They motivated, but the motivation ain't where it's supposed to be because they don't say, well, damn, they can't sit back and say, but damn, because most of the times when we were growing up, it was like, what would our mom and daddy or our granny or somebody say? But they kids nowadays can't say that. Hell, have they grannies damn near about 10 years, 15, 12 years older than them. So they don't see what we used to see. Yeah, that's true, too, yeah. That's true. But so like I'm saying, yo, I, like I said, I did this show today, man, to shout out my fucking city, man, Elizabeth, New Jersey. 
E court, E Swift, E Court Posse, Phase Two, Phase One, the Get Along Gang, South Park Street Posse, motherfucking Florida Street Posse, motherfucking Capitol Street Posse, East Grand Street. You know what I'm saying, nigga? We get it, we get it in, bro. Fact. That's why I did this show today, bro. I got tired. I'm because this motherfucker talk about New Jack City was based off the chamber, brother. No motherfucker. I, I remember when New Jack City came back. I went to the Levy Theater to go see the movie, bro. Yeah, niggas was always talk, doing that. Way niggas, yeah. was, they was talking about it was based on Malau Prello and e Port Posse, bro. Back then, in the 80s, bro. Right. So how the fuck is based on the Chambers Brothers now? Fuck them country bucking niggas, man. Them niggas, went to, them niggas left Alabama and went to Detroit and made money. But the niggas also let a white boy rattle them and ruin their whole organization. Right. White you know, boy white Rick. White boy Rick. Yeah. Oh, shit. oh, yeah. White boy Rick. Yeah. He cut, he, 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 he ruined their whole organization. Because this nigga was right since he was 12. Since he was 12? God damn. White boy Rick, he, he, he started rallying things so he could save his father. And he got a drug game, and when he got a drug game, he started giving the federal the federal government information on the Chambers brothers, the other brothers out of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because he was uh, because the whole thing was he was uh, smashing uh, the mayor's daughter, which is yeah. the same dude. You remember uh, first? You remember uh, the, the uh, Chambers? That was the Chambers. That was the Chambers. That was the Chambers boy's wife. Right, but I'm saying I know that, but I'm saying it was the mayor was that was the, the girl's daughter that he was smashing. Yeah. That's why he made sure he stayed in there. The guy that was the <clears throat> the chief of police in the uh, Beverly Hills Cop movie, yeah. the first one, the black he was dude. The mayor. He was the mayor, yeah. yeah, he was the mayor of Detroit. Damn, he was getting a lot of money though. He was he was balling. He was, and then that white boy came in and he didn't like that, and he started smashing his daughter, and that's why his ass couldn't get out. Cause she, he didn't. He was like, "Nah," because a lot he took a lot of people down. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he he did it. He, I'm keep real. Boy, so young, he knows the fuck he was doing, bro. Twelve years old, eleven years old, thirteen years old, bro. Well, I'm well, from. You, you knew you were right. You were right. That you can't tell them motherfuckers, but the white motherfuckers they was telling motherfuckers anyway. They didn't go fuck with that rat shit. They know it was to be a rat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. They have no code of conduct, but yes, still, they never get locked up. Yeah, like I said, man, fuck it. I'm going to say it again. Shout out to Elizabeth, New Jersey, E. Swift. Stand the fuck up, E. Poor Posse. All you niggas, the get along gang, the phase one, phase two, Catholic Street Posse, South Park Street Posse. Let's go, PS Matters, Bay Way. Let's get it, bruh. We did it, bruh. So fuck with anybody else think we did it. That's real talk, yo. But yo, man, I appreciate everybody for coming up here, man. I just wanted, I just had to, I just show, I had to show my husband love. We the real New Jack City motherfuckers. Hold up, let me look at these motherfuckers in the eyes real quick. Hold up, let me look at these motherfuckers in the eyes real quick. Take these shades off and shit. Nigga, we the real New Jack City motherfuckers. Elizabeth, New Jersey, stand up. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna keep a hundred percent. I'm gonna keep a buck fifty. With you. Them niggas in Harlem, New York, didn't make no money like Elizabeth make money, nigga. That nigga Alpo, Rich Porter, AZ, they ain't had no money like them niggas from Elizabeth, from Jersey. I ain't gonna say it was Jersey, period, bro. The things that Elizabeth North, we had that big bag, yo. Big bag, take little bag, nigga. That shit was long. We had yo the nigga. While well, from the niggas had. Money was was yeah, that money was train smoke long, nigga. Train smoke, choo choo. Let's keep it real. <laughs> that money train. <laughs> that money. The niggas from Harlem only had block money. We had Jersey long money, yo. Long the train smoke, nigga. For real. I ain't said I had it, but I see niggas that had it. I was around it. I remember them niggas, yo. So shout out to my niggas, man. Rest in peace to the ones that ain't make it. Hey, yo, we ain't no bloods or no crips. We doing our own thing. BTB TV just started his own game. Like, nigga, what? Salute. Right. Salute, man. Appreciate y'all for coming out, man. Nothing All right, peace. Peace.